Hi, I'm Dr. Penel Sanyas with Virginia Heart. I've been a cardiologist here for nine years, and one of the most gratifying things that I get to do is take care of women with heart disease and women at risk for heart disease. And the reason it's so gratifying is that women's risk factors often go under-recognized, and women, on the whole, have more risk associated with their heart disease and fare worse. In part, that's because women often have a biologically different form of heart disease. In general, when a heart attack happens, clot forms over cholesterol in one of the major arteries, and blood flow is blocked to the heart muscle, and the heart muscle dies. In men, that's typically associated with a critical narrowing of one of those major arteries that we see in angiography or catheterization, and that vessel can be stented, and blood flow then is restored. In women, not uncommonly, you have erosion of the plaque and the clot forms but then breaks down and showers down to the smaller branches that you can't see on angiography. You can't see it catheterization and you certainly can't stent it. So often, women will walk away from their heart attack with the impression that they had a milder heart attack because they didn't have critical blockages, when in fact the exact opposite is true. A woman with a heart attack is more likely to die in the first year after her heart attack than a man. Unfortunately, there are inherent biases in our medical system and society where women aren't always given the best life-saving medications that we know they should be treated with, like aspirin, beta blockers, and statins. At Virginia Heart, we're acutely aware of that bias and both check ourselves personally and also as a practice have metrics in place to ensure that we don't fall prey to the same bias and that we are treating women as aggressively as we can to reduce their long-term risk. If you had pregnancy-related complications like gestational diabetes or pregnancy-induced hypertension or preeclampsia, that conveys a higher lifetime risk of heart disease. Similarly, women are more likely to have autoimmune disorders like lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, and that inflammatory disorder also impacts your long-term vascular risk. In managing your risk, it's important to drill down to some of the numbers and to know them. Specifically, know your blood pressure, know your cholesterol, manage your weight, and stay active. If you have these risk factors or a strong family history of early heart disease, then I would encourage you to come see us at Virginia Heart so that we can review your risk with you and ensure that every I is dotted and T crossed to reduce your long-term risk.